The next shout I'm going to detail is the Dragon Rin shout. Whoa there, buddy. Um, which you get through a main storyline quest. You get through the Dragonborn quest. I'm going to use it on this dragon over there. I'm actually going to get one little sneak attack off on him. And then I'll be using uh, the shout right as soon as he lifts off. You'll notice right as soon as it hits him, uh, he goes into an animation sequence that will eventually place him on the ground where he is stuck. They have to stay on the ground the whole time your Dragon Rin shout is on them. Actually, looks like he's flying off. What the heck's going on here? Uh, anyway, the cooldown for Dragon Rin Shout is just right to allow you to chain it and keep a dragon locked down. Uh, I'm going to go see if I can find a slightly better example of it actually working. Um, that same dragon's actually coming back. If he hovers, he's going to hover. Okay, so he's not trying to land right there, but my Dragon Rin should, emphasis on should, should force him to land. Here he comes. Alright, now as he lands, you'll notice my cooldown's already almost off. I'm going to shoot one arrow, and then get the Dragon Rin back on him. And we're going to start picking away at this bad boy. And we're going to make sure that I stay alive. Let's do a couple plentiful healings. And I'm going to get one more shout on him. I don't think I'm going to show this whole dragon fight, just because it's going to be a pain in the butt, clearly. He is an elder dragon, so it'll take me a little while to take him down. That was way too many potions, actually. And here goes another shout before that one's off. And you can keep him locked down that way. Now, uh, to say a little bit more, I'm going to not say too much about where you get the shout, because literally about anything I say is a spoiler for the quest, and it's a really cool quest. Um, it's part of a quest that takes you down into Blackreach through Alfdand. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there it is, through Alfdan into Blackreach, which is a huge underground cavern that covers like 25% of Skyrim's surface. Um, but it's underground, it's not on the surface. That, that sounded misleading. Anyway, uh, you get it through a special event. Um, you get all three words at once, and as far as I know, you have to shout all three words at the same time. Uh, as far as its statistics go, its cooldown is 10 seconds, 12 seconds, 15 seconds. Uh, it forces the dragon to land for 15 seconds, 18 seconds, 22 seconds. So actually, uh, oh, the name of, the name of, okay, I'm not going to say the name of the quest. I just saw the name of the quest, but I'm not even going to say that because it's a giveaway. Um, it looks like you can use one, one or, or more words of the shout, though. You don't have to use all three at once, and it will affect longer, but of course cool down a little bit longer. So very handy against dragons, not really, not really anywhere else. The next shot we're going to take a look at is Elemental Fury, which increases your melee weapon attack speed. This is going to be in the Reach, which is Markarth's area. It's at a place called Dragon Tooth Crater. This is a Dragon Lair. As you can clearly see. And I've got a couple uh, melee weapons because I'm going to show how this works here in just a second. So this is the wall itself. Uh, for at least one word, let's say the first word of Elemental Fury. The second word of Elemental Fury is actually in somewhat of a misleading place. I am at the location the Statue to Meridia, because the dungeon that this word is in actually doesn't have its own location marker. The Statue of Meridia sits atop Kilcreeth, and within the Kilcreeth ruins is the word. Now, this word requires that you're on the quest, The Break of Dawn, which I believe can be started just by visiting the Shrine of Meridia that I've shown you to begin with. And uh, the first thing it's going to have you do is, is go get some item and bring it here, and then uh, she'll send you straight into the dungeon, where you can start completing a set of kind of interesting puzzles. And then you will eventually head to a balcony. So way up over here is where I first came into the Kilcreeth Temple. Right outside that is the Shrine to Meridia. And uh, it's fairly linear, of course, you know, puzzles uh, hold you back a touch. But the path is pretty obvious. The balcony takes you outside for just a second where I believe we turn around and go back inside. Ah, the pretty view of the balcony. The balcony is rather short-lived, and eventually you will enter Kilcreeth Ruins here. And uh, there's quite a bit of winding around here that uh, includes some of those 
orb placement puzzles. Uh, I can't even really call those puzzles, honestly. Um, but eventually, you unlock this door here in the middle of the main chamber, and it goes down back into the catacombs. And unfortunately, I can't exactly show you the word wall because there's an iron door down here that eventually relocks after you complete this quest and it disallows me from getting all the way back to the word wall uh, but within uh, on the other side of this iron door there is the word wall that contains elemental fury and that is the second elemental fury word I have now detailed the third and final word of elemental fury is at a place called Shriekwind Bastion now note that there are two ways to get into Shriekwind Bastion and they're not incredibly different so if you have the north that's okay, use just it. Um, if you have the south, I recommend that you go in through the south, and that's what I'm going to show you right here. Um, this is the south, that was actually the fast travel point, and I'm going to run right up to the door, down some stairs, up some stairs, and I'm going to give you some directions on how to get straight to the word wall from this entrance. Okay, so the south entrance deposits you here. The north entrance deposits you here but really what you want to do is you want to coming from the south entrance hang a right at this little uh... this little fork um, you can actually progress through into this room and then kind of back out at a lower level to get out at the north um, however this is going to go up to the very top of this chamber and hang on a right to go up these steps so again right out there is the south entrance uh... if you came from the north you'd be coming from that way and you'd go up these steps and around the corner and into the top of this main chamber at least here in a second here it is ah yes such a grand chamber and you would continue around the top of it the only logical linear way so here's the map view of the main chamber going around the top side of it will bring you to this side of the map where you'll follow some tub tunnels uh, it twists around, goes up, goes down a little bit and eventually comes to this room where the third and final elemental fury word exists and then escape quickly I'm through the yeah. overlook uh. to show elemental fury off a bit first note that I only have two words of this uh, it only affects your melee weapon so it's not really useful for my character so it's one of the fewer ones uh, one of the later ones I've prioritized its cooldown goes from 30 seconds to 40 seconds to 50 seconds it always lasts 15 seconds each word of it adds an additional 0.2 times multiplier to your attack speed the first level is 1.3 times the second level is 1.5 times the third level is 1.7 times so this is going to be an example of the 1.5 times attack speed increase now notice I'm dual wielding right now I'm just gonna swing my weapons a little bit just to show the speed I actually got a couple frame rate drops there for just a second it's kinda slow though and then once I do my elemental fury um, once I okay so when I just attempted that I found something out that is really bogus about elemental fury um, it doesn't work on enchanted weapons what what okay so I have an unenchanted dagger in my left hand now that is its rough swing speed I'm just swinging it time and time again and then just to show it, that's my axis swing speed. Whenever I do Elemental Fury, you'll notice A, it only goes on that one weapon. It's not on the axe. The axe still swings the same speed. However, that little dagger, that's what I wanted to show you before. Look at how fast that is. Can you imagine two weapons like that? I've used it a little bit on my Red Guard with double unenchanted weapons, and uh, the back and forth is incredibly fast. Uh, this doesn't show it real well, though, because it doesn't affect enchanted weapons. What? Alright, I don't have a whole lot to say about Elemental Fury anyway, because I haven't used it a whole lot, but I think I just broke it for me. That not affecting enchanted weapons is huge. That reduces its usefulness substantially. Alright, so moving right along from Elemental Fury, the next shout is Fire Breath. The first word of this, you'll likely get somewhere else, but I'm going to start here anyway. Uh, Sunderstone Gorge. I don't believe there are any quests associated with this, it's just some cave. Um, I believe this is a warlock slash necromancer cave. And uh, we're going to go inside. 
the word within Sunderstone is near the end of the ruins. Um, note that you can't go down this path. You'll go straight here and around, and this is kind of the exit path. And the wall looks just about like any other. There's the first word of Fire Breath. The second word of Fire Breath is learned again at the throat of the world on the main quest of the Dragonborn called Throat of the World. You get this one right after Clear Skies, right after you use Clear Skies to get up here. Um, you learn Fire Breath. The third and final word of Fire Breath you learn uh, at Dustman's Cairn on the Companion's Quest Proving Honor which if I remember correctly is is somewhat of an early companion's quest uh, so you can see the cairn right out here in the field uh, to the west of Whiterun we're going to dive inside and have a look quickly at the wall Dustman's Cairn as a whole is one of the lengthier dungeons um, you can see the map here you come in this entrance uh, it's fairly linear at this point and you go deeper into Dustman's Crypt and uh, by the way, I do believe that this is a dragon's priest, a dragon priest's lair. Um, you come in here uh, after a number of roundabouts and switchbacks and this and that. You come to the final chamber of Dustman's Crypt within Dustman's Cairn, and you find the word wall. There it is, bask in its glory. Let's go. Ah, uh, you can see my cooldowns are finally back to normal. The effect of the Talos Shrine has worn off. The recharge of Fire Breath goes 30, 50, 100 for the three different words. The damage of it starts with 50, jumps to 70, then to 90. So the top level does about 90 damage in its AoE. But wait, there's more. There is also a quote unquote perk that you can get for Fire Breath. You can get it from the leader of the Greybeards up on the throat of the world uh, that allows it to do an extra 10% damage. So kinda nice, especially if you're a Fire Breath user. Um, I'm not totally sure what kind of a character Fire Breath goes best with. It's just kind of a general damage ability. It doesn't necessarily have, uh, I don't know, certain synergies with any kind of a build. So uh, let's go ahead and drop it there and move on to Frost Breath. The first word of Frost Breath is pretty easy to get to, other than the fact that I had to face two dragons the first time I came out here. Uh, Bone Strewn Crest is right in the middle of East March, which is the area just south of uh, Windhelm or a ways north of Riften. And uh, Bone Strewn Crest is just a dragon lair right out on top of. Uh, it's on top of this mound. Everything around this mound is, is lower terrain, all the way around it in a circle. And uh, right there's your wall, word wall. Word two of Frost Breath is at uh, the Skyborn Altar. This is a dragon lair, and its face, I'm sorry, uh, it's on the northwest face of this mountain, and the path uh, comes from this side. So your best bet's probably Morthal or some other location right in here to try to travel here to the Skyborn Altar. And let's see, you can see part of the path from that side, I believe. Maybe? Maybe not? No, actually, that's the drop-off side. Let's see, this side has the path. I'll run over here real quick and see if I can get a glimpse of where it, uh, where it meets the general terrain below. Ah, uh, so you can kind of see the steps there. Yeah. So actually, uh, now that I look at it, it's kind of, it's kind of from down here, but still uh, from this part of the land. And uh, then, like any dragon lair, the word is quite simply up on a big wall. There she blows. The third and final word of frost breath is at full Gunther here in Yalmarch. Solitude, just up to the northwest. And this does have a quest associated. It's called Forbidden Legends. However, you can start the quest by coming here. So you don't necessarily have to do anything before coming here. Um, this journal, I think, is either an objective or will start the quest. You can also start the quest by reading the book uh, Forgotten Legends or maybe Forgotten Legend or something like that. 
Uh, let's head inside Full Gunther. When you enter Full Gunther, you don't have to go all that far um, through this main chamber and I think up or down once or twice uh, to get to the Full Gunther Crypt. Which has the word wall readily available. Just came in that door, there's the word wall. BAM! Level 3 Frost Breath. And actually, coming back out of here, I just now noticed that I was wrong. When you come in here, um, it's misleading because for some reason it's not showing on my map. But there's actually a door right here that leads to the crypts. Um, this door I don't believe is open. I don't think you can get through here. So, you're going to have to go this long route. Um, all the way back to here where there is a door. That leads to the crypts. Frost Breath's cooldowns, as you see, go 30, 50, 100, exactly the same as Fire Breath. Uh, its damage is, let's see, is it identical? I don't think it's identical, but it's comparable. Um, it actually does damage per second, and then has a slow component. So, the first word does 10 damage a second for 5 seconds, and slows. The second word does 14 damage a second. The third word does 18 damage a second. Again, all for 5 seconds. So, a little simple math says that Frost Breath does 50 damage, 70 damage, 95 damage, respectively, each word, uh, as, com as compared to Fire Breath's 50, 70, 90. So, the top level does 5 extra damage per second. And this is what it looks like hitting a couple wolves with it! Oh, wait, hold on, maybe not. Let me let me get these guys in line here. Boom, wolves! I said boom. Next in line is gonna be Ice Form. The first word of it is within Frostmere Crypt in the Pale. And there is a dungeon quest associated called the Pale Lady. Let's move inside the crypt and have a look-see. So when you enter Frostmere Crypt, you'll come in this top door, you'll come down through some winding parts of the map and some open rooms into Frostmere Depths. And as you enter the depths, you will be presented with a small pond and an altar, uh, as well as some elements of the quest, which I won't spoil. Over here to your right, alongside the exit to Frostmere Crypt, stands a word wall. So on your mini-map, I should say local map, this is not StarCraft, um, right about here is the word wall, and then just left the word wall is the exit to the dungeon. On to the next! The second word of ice form is at Mount Anthor, near Winterhold. This uh, dragon lair faces north on this mountain, so you can come from anywhere up here on the north side, Sarthol or uh, across that little back path out of Winterhold. And of course is guarded by a dragon, just as you might expect. And right there is the word wall itself. So now we have two ice form word walls. And the final one is nearby as well. This is Sarthal. This is a dungeon that the basically the introductory College of Winterhold quest takes you to. And uh, it is locked until you're on that quest. And this is the location of the third and final Ice Form Ward Wall. Assuming you have no trouble with the various puzzles, um, you start back here at this door and it's fairly linear, although these are wide open chambers, so it might take you a second to find the door to the next. You'll come through a little burial chamber and we'll go deeper into Sarthal. And you'll travel some more winding paths and some large chambers, maybe even fight a little mini-boss or two, to end up in the final chamber, where the final word of Ice Form resides. Now, let's see what kind of fun we can have real fast with Ice Form. Ice Form, as you can see, is one of the, I would say, medium range, kind of longer range, cooldown shouts. Um, the third word of it being up to 120 seconds, so a full two minutes. Ice form lasts 15 seconds for word one, 30 seconds for word two, and 60 seconds for word three. And uh, each level of that does two damage per second while having an enemy frozen solid. So I'm going to see if I can uh, freeze solid a troll and then send him over the edge. There's the frozen solid troll. Oh, he's just stuck there. 
just won't go over the edge, huh? Well, that's too bad. I'll have to help you out then. Let's give the troll another try. Let me set this up a little bit better. Get him right up on this edge. I still don't think that... Oh, oh, that may work. That may have it. Oh, here we go. Go, troll, go. Oh, no, he's going to stop. He's going to stop. Oh, man. All right, so there's this usage of it, and let me see if I can get a pack of people just to show, show its AoE. Say you have a group of a few different enemies, and you would like to not fight all of them at once. Or say, uh, maybe lock all of them down just to give yourself a little breather. If you position them well enough... Oh, I did not position them very well at all. Let's see if I can give the three dopes a second chance. Oh, come on, line up. Up. Ah, I got one of them. Not quite two. Well, maybe that's a good display of the AoE capabilities. Or, uh, I should say the lack thereof. I'm going to go ahead and move right along to Kynes Peace. The first word of which is in Ragenvald. Within the Reach, not too far from Markarth. This is a Dragon Priest's lair. Let's head inside. This temple has an interesting little skull puzzle where you have to acquire skulls from each of these side rooms and the other, the secondary doors, you coming back out. And then you have to place them on this little altar to lower a spike gate so that you can continue on to the main chamber which houses the word wall. So again, right here at the very end, pretty short other than the fact that you have to go off either side before you can open a gate right about here. The second word of Kind's piece is in Ranvig's Fast. This is technically in Whiterun's zone. It's over here on this cliff on the south face of it. Here's the path leading up and right over there is the front door which I'm going to go use now this one is largely very simple front door straight hallway one turn main chamber dead in front be the word wall of course you're gonna wanna watch your trap door there jump around the side BAM two words of kinds piece the third and final word of kinds piece is very close to Iverstead in Shroud Hearth Burrow, so there's the buildings of Iverstead. Here's the burrow, very close, within town limits, I'd even go as far as to say. Within the burrow limits, there are a number of traps and locked doors. Uh, this is probably something I should have mentioned right before I came in here. Um, but there's a locked door right here that requires a key. I believe from the local innkeeper. If you go talk to the innkeeper in Iverstead, he'll say something about this barrow being haunted. Uh, you continue the dialogue with him, he'll eventually give you a key that gets you through a door a ways in here, um, which is well after you've already dealt with the ghost. Um, so let's uh, proceed. Again, Again, this is the way out. So this is where you originally come in. Um, you can kind of get over into here, but it doesn't go as far back as to that door you have to wind around this path and go deeper into the burrow, into the depths, and then eventually you'll come out right here. Uh, so let's go to the Shroud, Shroud Hearth Depths. Where the word wall itself resides. So this one is uh, much simpler than the last. You come in, there's one big chamber, you've got some battle to do there, and then the second big chamber houses your word wall. And that is the final word of Kind's Peace. So, let's continue on. Uh, let's see, this one, I believe, is a shout that I don't have all the words of. If I do, I don't think I've ever used it. Yeah, I'm missing two words. Um, so, I don't think I'm going to demo this one. I haven't used it at all, ever. I bought one word with it just because at one point in time I had a crap ton of Dragon Souls, so I just started spamming them out on whatever. Um, this is an AoE comm. It will cause, uh, it says beasts. I thought it was people as well, but it looks like it might not be. Okay, just confirmed using the guide, it is actually just wild beasts. It does not affect humanoids or uh, 
uh, a number of the monsters, the quote-unquote monsters in the game. Um, the different words of it all affect up to a max level of 20. Um, each one lasts, excuse me, each one lasts an additional 60 seconds. So, starting at 60, going to 120, then to 180. Um, so, three minutes at the very end, you could calm a big pack of animals and then just pick them all off. And you can see the cooldown is uh, much, much less than the duration. So, you could probably get through certain caves and whatnot that are full of wild beasts without having to touch any of them. Alright, let's continue to the next shout. The next shout we're going to take a look at is one of my archer's personal favorites, Marked for Death. So, the first word of this shout is at a dragon lair in the rift called Autumn Watch Tower. It's down here in this uh, southwestmost corner of the rift. Note that from Helgen, you can get through these mountains uh, by one path that goes right up through next to uh, Hamer Shame and uh, this Stormcloak camp, and uh, eventually come out over here, or you could just say, uh, you know, carriage ride to Riften and go for a trek. And Autumn Watch Tower. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. It's mainly just this, uh, well, I guess there's a couple towers, but this taller of the two towers is the one that has the word wall at it. And of course, since it's a dragon lair, you can expect to find a dragon here, which is kind of nice. I really love getting word walls at dragon lairs because, well, because uh, it gives you the soul for the word that you're about to discover. So here's the word wall, and that gives you a word of marked for death. All right, let's continue to the next word. Oh, the dragon went belly up on me. The next word that I'm going to detail of marked for death is within the Dark Brotherhood Sanctuary near Fall Creeth. Now, as you might guess, you're going to need to be a member of the Dark Brotherhood to get to this one. Um, if you need any assistance on how to join the Dark Brotherhood, I actually have a video series where I walk through the entire quest chain. So, uh... E, let's see, you'll have to look back in my uploaded videos quite a ways. Uh, anyway, if you're moving from Falkreath, uh, I'm on this road that I believe goes at the south end of Falkreath. And uh, off here to your right, right in the area that i just now shown you on, on the map, um, there's not really a footpath, but you can kind of tell it's a little bit cleared out. And down here by this weird little black pool, there is a doorway into the sanctuary. And I'm going to show you guys as little of the inside of the sanctuary as possible. Um, but you come in up here, and it's basically one bend and then a straight shot out into the main chamber of the sanctuary. And the word wall's dead ahead, right in front of you. The third and final word of Marked for Death is in a place called the Forsaken Cave. This is within the Pale. That's technically Dawnstar's region although it's kind of a weird shaped region, it kind of looks like a boot. Um, anyway, this location is tied to a side quest, the White File, which I believe you can start uh, at the Alchemist in Windhelm. I believe his shop is named the same, the White Fi File. It's like uh, right over here in the southwest corner of, of Windhelm. I believe that you can enter this cave and get to the Word Wall without being on the quest though. Once inside, you'll be subject to a rather long, winding series of tunnels that will eventually take you to the Forsaken Crypt. Now, you'll note that there is a door over here for the Forsaken Crypt. That is the exit there. I don't think there's a way to get to that uh, from the entrance. First time you're coming through here. Um, so, let's venture deeper. After being subject to yet more windiness, this looks really straightforward. It looks like you could just come around the corner and get right to where I am, but no. You come in on like the ground floor level and you gotta like go over here to go up and then like go out here and then go all around. Uh, anyway, you eventually end up in this main chamber where the word wall itself lies. Bada bing! That makes for word three of Marked for Death. So, let's go take a look at why this is my favorite archer shout. This shout has two different components. It has an armor reduction component and a damage health component. So as you can see across the bottom there, the recharge is very light on this. The third word is only a 40 second recharge still, which is one of the shorter uh, third word recharges. 
The armor reduction starts at 25 and goes up by 25 each level. So 25, negative 50, then negative 75 armor. And the damage health component is one damage a second for 60 seconds. Then it goes up to two, then up to three. Um, however, at the top level, it still only lasts 60 seconds. So it gets up to doing 180 damage, which is better than the fire shout, the, or the, the fire breath, the frost breath. Um, and it reduces their armor. It's just that it does its damage very slowly. So to take a look at this, um, I'm gonna make some guards hate me. <laughs> Hopefully I don't kill this guy in about two shots. We're gonna take a shot at him, then I'm gonna shout, then I'm gonna take another shot at him, just to try to compare the difference in shot damage. There's one shot. Awesome, he even got paralyzed. No. So now he's got that on him. You can see how much health has gone this time. Oh yeah, noticeably more the second shot. And the third shot apparently did not get him. The fourth one killed him. So uh, that wasn't a great example of why the armor reduction is great. Um, however, it's uh, it's 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 really effective in co in conjunction with the bow. Um, in conjunction with magic, it's really nothing. If you're a magic user, you're basically only using the shout for the damage component. If you're using it, and if you know that the shout is going to run its full 60 second course, it still does more damage than fire breath or frost breath. Um, if you're say a melee warrior though, or uh, an archer like me, that armor reduction allows all of your other attacks to do more damage to them as well. So it's really a great choice for a shout uh, for those types. It's even decent for a mage. It just doesn't have that specific synergy that it does with the other two. All right, so let's move along to the next shout. 